Hey, I'm pretty much going to be pimping out a show. Uh, unfortunately, I have to do a little bit of spoilers, but they're very light, very out of context. They're not going to take away your enjoyment. They're just going to inform you what kind of show we're dealing with. Hey, everybody, it's Triple L, and today, let me tell you about Death March. Holy man. Jeez, let me tell you. All right, guys, so listen up. Death, Death March is a 2018 anime coming out in winter. It is officially being aired, I think, I'm just looking at the internet right now, in 27 days. So that's like, yeah, right around when all the other winter series are going to be going up. Guys, I really love Death March. It is originally a light novel series featuring a protagonist from Japan who gets transported to another world. Yes, it's one of those series, the ones known as isekai, the in another world genre. This is a sp in a particular substrain of that genre, the worlds that have game-like mechanics to them. It's a world where, you know, there's levels and stats and the character has access to that, there's skill acquisition in the similar ways that you can expect from an RPG world. Uh, it's that strain of in another world series as is common with the stories in this genre the main character is ridiculously overpowered but the thing with the isekai stories is always how does that overpoweredness play out in the recent year we had smartphone that was a horrible excuse of handling a character who is overpowered heck god was on his side the whole time death march you have a similarly overpowered character but death march plays it up in a slightly different way and this is one of the main draws with the Isekai series, right? Isekai being this whole investigating another world, it's always coming down to how the characters are handled. And this is where Death March does really well. Uh, like I said, the main character is Sato, a programmer from Japan. He goes into this other world. Something happens. You can kind of see it in the trailer what ultimately happened. You can get an idea of what the trailer is saying happened. But something happens and he ultimately becomes overpowered. What does he go on to do after that? Well, he goes on to learn about this world. One of the main drives for Sato in this other world isn't so much fighting and combat. Rather, it's sightseeing and at a later point, um, interactions with his friends in that world. Now, this was really interesting when you were reading this novel because taking fights out of the equation is a very easy way to reduce an overpowered character back to some idea of normalcy. Instead of just seeing a guy go through and throttle every enemy that he finds, just wipe out every enemy he finds, you're going to see a guy who will go through and stop every enemy he finds, but he will also have to deal with the struggles of integrating in the normalcy of another world and playing up that kind of face, his social game pretty much. What Death March does with Sato is that he makes us kind of join him on his journey to understand his struggles in fitting in in this world and just trying to ensure pretty much a comfortable life for himself. Um, making his goal sightseeing opens up the avenue where he has to go and fight things because those things are going to destroy the sightseeing spots for him. If he doesn't fight, he's going to lose that cool little waterfall that he wants to go see. If he doesn't fight, he's going to lose that cute little town that he wants to go see. With Sato's journey in Death March, it was a really interesting thing because you end up with this character who is overpowered enough and that overpoweredness gives him the means to go and make some aspects of the world a little bit easier on himself, but it also still presents a challenge. I know that light novel readers will remember the time that Sato absolutely struggled when he was searching the whole world for a single ingredient that he wanted to put into a dish. And that is Death March. And that is Death March in its finest. It's the, the story of this one guy who's really strong, but he can't get the simple things like a banana or a pickle. The trailer for Death March also highlights another aspect. The girls are going to be following Sato around. Yes, Death March is a harem based series, but Sato is a common man from Japan. He has Japanese uh, tendencies. As he says, he's just an honest, normal Japanese man. So how that plays in, it becomes an issue with Sato of asking of, you know, what is culturally appropriate for the people of this world versus what's culturally appropriate for him. And Death March also does a really good job with the female cast. When you look back at Smartphone, Smartphone, you could argue, had a really big problem with that a lot of its main heroines were just kind of bland after a certain point. Death March does have their women being more fleshed out, and that is great for a harem series. Also by making Sato 
obviously aware of what all the girls in his group want to do to him, but having him stop it because of moral constraints or because he just doesn't want to, you know, you do have a bit of a refreshing take and it does take the girls seriously. Furthermore, when it goes into making the show interesting for Sato, it it very quickly becomes a scenario where the character is invested in making sure that when he leaves this world, the people that he has touched, the people who have traveled with him, the people who he's cared for, become competent enough that they can stand on their own. And that becomes one of the secondary goals. When it comes to strong characters, how you handle every character around them, that could make or break a series. We look at One Punch Man. One Punch Man, Saitama is super strong. But... A lot of times, we are just seeing how other characters, the other heroes, are struggling against the enemies that Saitama will eventually overcome. That's one of the ways you can balance out having a really overpowered character. With Sato, you have his girls, you have them getting fleshed out, you have him there, you have him seeing their progress. He's super strong, but he wants to make his friends strong because he doesn't want to stand the risk of losing them. And true enough, when you're continuing along this kind of pathway for Sato, it very quickly Death March starts to develop this kind of plot line about the value of life in regards to Sato. What does Sato feel about when there's a person right in front of him who is about to die of old age and he has all the power in the world, but even though it's a natural death, like what can he do about it? He doesn't want someone to die. And so, you know, it's an exploration of that kind of thing. When you're looking back to his, his uh, little girls who are traveling around with him in his harem, Death March turns it into an issue where Sato's pretty much micromanaging. He wants to power level his friends up to a point that they can be comparable to him so that when he leaves, they can be safe. Um, the value of life, the threat to their lives is always going to be there. And Sato has to try and mitigate that uh, danger. He has to try and manage that danger around them. It's very interesting to see that because the weakness of an overpowered character is naturally the people he cares about. And seeing how Sato deals with that is amazing. Another aspect of uh, Death March that I think is really interesting is that there is some level of political intrigue and economics kind of playing into it. In the original light novel or the web novel, whichever one you picked, a lot of it, we have to deal with Sato going around the world and eventually developing economic interest in various spots. And this is where I really want to see how the anime is going to play it out. Because in the light novels, because Sato's overpowered, naturally he can teleport wherever he wants or fly wherever he wants or go back to whatever place he wants to go back to. And a lot of micromanaging as, as well. I do wonder how the anime is going to portray that. And now that we're talking about anime portrayals, and guys, you know, I kind of went into a, a tangent there, but just the main points of that is, you know, uh, Sato's a pretty cool overpowered character. They have an interesting way of keeping him leveled and giving him some kind of realistic problems. And then they have the arama element. The other element now is how the anime is going to adapt all this. It's being done by Silverlink. Silverlink previously did um, The Chivalry of a Failed Knight. I really enjoyed that. So when it comes to the emotional points, I'm very excited for Death March. I do think Death March is going to hit the emotional highs. But I do wonder um, how fleshed out are the characters going to get. In the light novel, you have the, I guess, luxury of giving all the girls side chapters. Like every novel will have maybe uh, five or six side chapters and maybe they will be dedicated to what the girls in the group are doing. That's a very great way of fleshing out the characters. Will we get that kind of detail to the characters? Because we have a harem that at most commonly has about seven members in it. Seeing how the anime juggles their personalities and aspects, I'm very excited about it. In the harem, there's also two little girls and then a, a one who's a little bit older, but you know, quite a few lolis, um, but they are still just naturally young girls. Um, a good aspect of Death March is just how Sato's kind of parenting them and raising them and seeing them get stronger. That is where some of the reward for Death March comes in. You get invested in these characters who are weak. Sato's invested in these characters who are weak. He wants them to be strong. We want to see them get strong. And over time, that's exactly what we get. We get to see them grow up. We get to see them become competent. We get to see them experience a happy life. And it just kind of puts a nice ribbon on the whole thing that is Death March. Now, mind you, Death March, I do feel, has a few little uh, flaws here and there, specifically with Sato, because they had to make Sato a very straight and ethical man. And to some degree, uh, that personality does kind of take away from uh, Death March's more epic overtones, especially when it comes to battling. Like, because Sato wants to remove himself from fighting, because his main goal is sightseeing, some viewers may find it a little bit annoying when he does go and do the more slice of life type things like looking for ingredients or learning how to cook properly but 
that that is ultimately a part of Death March, and it is really enjoyable when you're going in and you're reading these volumes and you're reading full chapters about the guy trying to just cook a crab or find a crab or catching new ingredients, and then everyone in the in the bottom just talking like you know still not as great as the pickle hunt of it, still not as great as the pickle hunt of eighty six, but uh, it's just one of those little things. Uh, Death March definitely established itself as having its own unique quirks. And even with Sato, who is so overpowered, in exchange for danger, it gave you controlled and safe growth. So the moments that the girls are in danger, you'll be on the edge a lot more. Death March, though, man. I was so excited for this. This is going to be great. And the next book is... And the next best thing is that since I am like almost fully caught up with the light novels, I'll be able to know exactly what they're skipping over. And so that's going to be an exciting thing. Now, the only question is how many episodes it has. If Death March gets a 12th episode order, that's going to be unfortunate. I think it, it needs the 24 because uh, I don't I can't think of any great point that we can leave off at the beginning unless we're really rushing through things. But um, 24 episodes would be great. Anyway, Death March. It is an isekai, an in-another-world genre. It has an overpowered main character. It has quite a big harem, but there's a lot of micromanagement involved. There's a little bit of political intrigue, but man, it's largely just about this guy who just wants to go sightseeing in the world, and everything in the world wants to stop him. But yeah, guys, that's Death March. If you are a Death March reader, man, let's be happy. Tell me down below if you are. And uh, till next time, guys, have a great day. And I'm so excited for freaking Death March, man. This is the best.